Buongiorno, and welcome to another adventure. I'm here today with my friend Elisabetta Morelli, and we've rented a boat for a joyride through the canals of Venice. Buongiorno to everybody, I'm Elisabetta Morelli. I'm a local tour guide of Venice, and I'm going to show you some very interesting part of Venice because you have the opportunity to be by boat which is not so I mean typical That's very fun. <laughs> Dovremmo fare, Gabriele, un giretto per i canaletti, sì. se puoi passare davanti a dei posti carini, più possibile, esci anche magari nella Laguna okay. Rocca e li mostro il cimitero. Okay. Io, dobbiamo okay. parlare e filmare. On the left hand side you can see a fire boat, Vigili del Fuoco. Not in emergency, so it's not a fire, probably they're going to look for the cat on the top of the roof. Who knows? <laughs> so now we're on the Grand Canal. Now we are along the Grand Canal. We have splendid buildings on both sides that you can recognize uh, the period when they have been built according to the shape of the arches. For example, on the right hand side we have a splendid building dating back to Renaissance with the plain arches of Renaissance, another yellow one. Instead, on the left hand side, you can see a typical Gothic window with the same shape of window you have seen on the Doge's Palace, for example. When you see two obelisks on the top of a roof, for example, Palazzo Pappadopoli, the one we are going to pass in front, which is now a very famous hotel, the Hotel Amman, normally we say that. Uh, this is the symbol of a general and admiral who lived inside, but probably there were two chimneys of the past. So you can read uh, in Venice a lot of stories. In fact, uh, quite often you ask something to the Venetians, uh, the answer is going to be, it depends, because we have a double version of everything. <laughs> so we have a story and another story. Then, on the left hand side with a beautiful green terrace, you can see one of the oldest palaces of at the Grand Canal, Palazzo Barzizza, dated back to the 12th century. On the right, a splendid building made by San Michele, another Renaissance architect, which is now the Court of Justice of Venice. Instead, the two very old buildings with the flags out are always on the right hand side, where we can start to walk a little bit, which are the ones belonging to the city hall of Venice, Palazzo Loredan Farsete, Loredan Piscopia, which are the two buildings on the right hand side. In front of your eyes, you have the splendid view from the canal of the bridge the Rialto Bridge. The name derived from Rivus Alto High Banks, obviously the name of the area. This is the bridge dated back to 1588, behind which you can see there is a terrace with some people. And Sarah told you last night that there is the terrace that you can book and from where you can have a splendid view of the Grand Canal and also some parts of the lagoon. It depends on the day. If it is a very clear day, you can see everything, even the mountains from the top of the terrace. Now we are approaching Rialto Bridge and we are going to get off close to the bridge. The bridge has been built in stone, even if it was originally in wood. After two big fires we had, the one which burned the German warehouse in 1506, the one which burned completely the market in 1513. The wooden bridge never burned, but this is the reason why they made a competition to make a stone bridge more resistant to fire. And it has been won by the architect Da Ponte, who made the bridge in 1588, as I said. The only bridge we had crossing the Grand Canal until when, in the 1800s, they added the Academia, the one in front of the train station. Va benissimo, grazie. So now we are getting off in the real part of the town, which is the Rialto Market, which is not operating today because we are on Monday. It operates from Tuesday until Saturday only in the morning. And you can see, if you are looking carefully on the left hand side, that the water was over the steps because today the water is quite high. You can also notice it if you are checking the 
landing stages in front of the private homes because they're leaning on one side. Now we are getting off in the Herbaria, herbs, green stuff, because this is where once they were selling fruit and vegetables. So in the market you can see the toponomastic is reminding you which kind of stuff was going to be sold in each part of the market. on the left hand side a very important church because this was the first seat of the patriarch in Venice Beato Lorenzo Giustiniani in the half of the 1400 and is a beautiful renaissance facade with the symbol of the patriarch on the top the two keys and the splendid bell tower completely covered by white eastern stone which is quite unique because normally the bell towers are in bricks in Venice the seat of the Petrarch has been moved by Napolo into the church of St. Mark in 1807, which is now the seat of the Petrarch. Now we are really entering the canals where uh, you can see a lot of people living in Venice, plenty of private boats belonging to the owner of the houses very close by. This is one of the most populated parts of Venice today, the Castello district. Venice is divided into six districts. The most populated parts of Venice are on the extreme part of Venice, which has the shape of a fish. We are close to the tail of the fish. And the opposite side, which is also very inhabited, is Canareggio, which is close to the head of the fish. You can see that there are plenty of windows open, a few people strolling around, because you know that now in Venice we don't have so many inhabitants any longer, but however, this is still very populated compared to the rest of the town. So close to St. Mark, close to Rialto, we don't have any longer so many inhabitants. Today is not the day for the laundry, but normally there is laundry crisscrossing all the windows. You can see something hanging out, but now we are going to crisscross the real canals. And you are going to see plenty of boats parked. And I repeat, to park your boat, you need a special permission. You cannot park your boat wherever you like. So we don't use our boats as normally we are used to, you, to get by car. Because to go by boat means to prepare the boat, to open the boat, to put that the cushion, to do everything. So it takes time. It's a lot quicker to go directly by Vaporetto bus. There is not so much laundry out, as I told you, because the weather is not so nice today. We had splendid days before, so they did the laundry a few days ago. <laughs> we are passing very close to where the Vaporetti are going to be repaired. The Vaporetto is a vapor boat, right? because the steam, they were steamboat at the beginning. I didn't know that, Elizabeth. Steamboat. I had no idea that vapore, it makes sense, vapor. I've never, this is the origin. This is the origin of the word vaporetto. Wow, we call vaporetto all the the buses. In reality, we have different shapes. On the left, now you can see the laundry out. This is the Venice I like to show you. In a place where they are going to repair gondolas and boats. And as you can see, all the Venetian boats are flat at the bottom to have the possibility to go even in a very, very shallow water, the reason why Venice started to exist. Now we are trying to catch a canal if we have the possibility to pass underneath the bridges because it depends on the height of the tide, where you can see the laundry crisscrossing the canal. So if you are going to lose uh, some pieces into the water, you must wait for a boat passing by to pick it up. So you're very careful normally. <laughs> so
so we are flanking two sides of the canal with a lot of boats packed on both sides and the laundry crisscrossing the canal. And you can understand that this is a place where we don't simply have hotels, but this is a place where the Venetians are really living. You can see that two teenagers are repairing their own boat. And these are the boats used by everybody to get out into the lagoon to spend the day by boat in the lagoon because we like to get out by boat and to spend the day fishing, sunbathing, enjoying ourselves. In fact, it's an area without so many restaurants and bars like the rest of Venice. It's very quiet. This here, unfortunately, everything is quieter than normally because we have some tourists even looking for this part of Venice, which are the ones showing you the true Venice. But not this year. Look at the laundry over there, Sara. You cannot realize that every time we are going to pass underneath the bridge, we have to lower ourselves. <laughs> if not, we are banging the head against the bridges. <laughs> <laughs> and in this bar, on the right hand side, there are only Venetians having a break, drinking the very typical spritz, because now is lunch time, it's 12.30, so before having lunch, they are having the spritz all together. <laughs> so tell us what a spritz is. The spritz, uh, I mean, uh, I don't drink alcohol, so I'm the worst in describing alcohol things. However, it is a white wine with Campari or bitter that normally you are drinking with the olive inside and you are having some snacks together. Normally we are having the chicchetti together, not to get drunk, because normally the Venetians are not drinking simply one spritz, but a couple of spritz for before lunch or before dinner. So it's a typical habit that we have to drink the spritz together. Now we are getting out close to the Giardini, the gardens. And we are entering St. Mark's Basin very shortly. Another bridge, so I have to lower because our taxi driver is very good. <laughs> it's not so easy to pass underneath the bridges. And you can see that we have some gardens. Uh, quite often gardens are hidden behind the palaces, so are possible to be seen only if you're going to catch a boat like this one and crisscross in the inner canals. So they're not possible to be seen when normally you are strolling around Venice, walking in Venice, but only by boat. Now we are getting out into the open basin. On the left hand side we have the sandy bar protecting the lagoon from the open sea, which is the Lido Island where I live. Then we have a few islands scattered around the southern part of the lagoon. Two of them now are hotels, the San Clemente Palace, which is the pink building very far away on, uh, in front of you. But the most important island we have close by, of which we can see the back side, is San Giorgio Maggiore, with a splendid church made by Palladio that we are going to see in a while. On the right hand side, we have a beautiful stroll, which starts from the Giardini de Gardens, where we have normally the Biennale Contemporary Art, where you can see the red banner over there, and is getting as far as St. Mark Square is. Normally we have plenty of boats docked over here, plenty of private, private beautiful boats docked over here during the summer. We are going to see the last entrance into the shipyard of Venice in a while. So now we have uh, the very new entrance into the shipyard, but before looking at it, we have the splendid hands made by Lorenzo Quinn, which are permanently here since uh, one year ago. 
and they're representing hands in different position to represent uh, friendship, uh, love, uh, I mean, uh, many different ways of interpretation. And this is a beautiful masterpiece of art, uh, which has been given by Lorenzo Quinto, the town of Venice. Then we are entering the shipyard again, uh, through another door. This is the very new door overlooking the seaside. And uh, this is the part that normally is going to be used by La Biennale of contemporary art to expose art. Now, of course, uh, it's empty because uh, we should have had the Biennale of contemporary art this year, but they have been, it has been cancelled because of the COVID, of course, as you know. And it's going to take place next year. So everything has been postponed. And this is the section uh, which is going to be rented because we don't have any longer, I mean, uh, the Navy is not compulsory any longer, so we don't have so many people working for the Navy any longer. That's why they don't need any longer all the shipyard to be used for the Navy. And we are entering one of the bases. Once the ships were going to be made in the square, they were making the flanks of the ship first, then turning them, making the bottom, putting the ships into the water. And along the little canal we were pointing you out before, they were getting out, picking up flags, weapons, sails, ropes to arm the ship. You can see that we have people working on the right hand side because we have the Tetis, which is a big office working on the lagoon as well on the right hand side. There are plenty of working boats belonging to people coming every day. And on the left you can see the big basin that unfortunately we cannot enter completely. We have uh, the splendid sailing boat which raised for the Americans Cup uh, Il Moro di Venezia on the right hand side, the red boat, which is going to be kept over here. And unfortunately something very sad to be quoted, which is the boat on the left hand side, uh, which is the one of the shipwreck. Oh, it's still here. It's still here, yes. That's part of the Biennale. The That's part of the Biennale, of the last year. Biennale we had, uh, two years ago. Was it 2019? No. Uh, it was last year. Yes. So you can see the rest of the boat are belonging to the Navy. The only ones allowed really to enter and to see are the ones uh, uh, working for the Navy, of course. So we are doing something special just to come over here. There is only one pavilion open for La Biennale. There is a small Biennale on now, which is the one you're looking at with people working outside. But it's not the normal Biennale we have, which is a huge, and there is a staff scattered around the town as well because there is no room in the Giardini to welcome all the masterpieces of contemporary art in the Biennale. Well, we have the pavilions belonging to each country, the American one, the French one, the German one, and so on. And we are going to pass in front in a while. This is where they were making the ships. And now we are getting out again. So they were making the ships here how long ago? When was this used for shipbuilding? Until practically the 1700, 1800. So starting in the 11 and 1200s, yes. going no, they start, all the, way the, the shipyard has been created at the beginning of the 1100. So it was absolutely small, and then it has been enlarged twice. 600 years of shipbuilding, and this was the most powerful shipbuilding area in the world at the absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yeah. Now we still have a ship, uh, a shipyard in Venice where they're still making ships, but it's on the mainland. Yeah. Where we have the Fincantieri. Yeah. So they're making the huge cruise ships now, not any longer the beautiful galere of the past. Le grosse e le lunghe, the fat one and the long one, the fat one for the transportation, the merchandise, the long one to fight. Yeah. Now they are making cruise ships.
now from this hall uh, on the right hand side you are going to see something magnificent this is the shipyard of venice which is one of the very hidden part of venice because it's a part of venice that normally you cannot enter and visit and if we are very lucky we are going to see but they're not any longer here the boats for the race this is the square of the shipyard where they were making the ships and this is a place where they are keeping the boat for the historical race inside the historical race takes place every year on the first sunday in september and is the most important race we have the shipyard of venice is one of the three most important parts of venice which are St. Marco Square, the political center of Venice since the very beginning, Rialto, the trading business center of Venice since the very beginning, and the shipyard where they were making ships for many different parts in Europe, but above all for themselves. And uh, it's divided into three parts. You can see a submarine on the left hand side because now it's the seat of the Navy. And that's the reason why we cannot really enter the shipyard. We did something very special to be where we are. And now we need to get out because it's not allowed to go over down there. Where you can see a beautiful big boat for the race down there. The two towers in front of you are the, the ground entrance into the shipyard of Venice. Which is the seat of the Navy again, which is not possible to be visited. There is a part of the ship now rented to La Biennale of Contemporary Art, where they expose contemporary art every time the Biennale takes place, which is on the opposite side that we cannot see it from the from the water from where we are. Now we are getting out into the northern part of the lagoon, which is the oldest part of the lagoon, and in front of us we are going to see the island of Murano. At the very beginning, it was one of the many islands using the lagoon for the refugees coming from the mainland, uh, taking refugees to Venice. In front of us, we have a water bus passing by because even the buses in Venice are different. We have water buses because the only way to crisscross Venice is by water. So we are going to do something very special. Murano is the big island on the left hand side which became very famous since when for the threat of fire they move all the glass blowing factory once in Venice onto Murano Island. Why? Because uh, obviously to melt uh, the mineral oxides to make the glass they needed fire. All the buildings in Venice are made in wood to be lighter because Venice is built over muddy islands. That's why fire was burning very easily Venice in the past. That's why to prevent the burning of the big town, they decided to move all the glass factory onto Murano Island, but also to better preserve the secret of how they were blowing the glass. We are always circumnavigating the shipyard, which covers 120 of the town because it's very big. These are the little houses belonging to the people working for the Navy. And on the left hand side, instead, you can see plenty of different islands. As you can observe, we are following a very precise street, if I can speak about the street, obviously, as a canal, which is very well delimited by le bricole, the wooden piles you are looking at on both sides, because the water of the lagoon is not deep enough to be crisscrossed everywhere. So canals, for the most, must be dredged every few years because the moat of the tide is bringing in a lot of mud. Uh, we want to. I just want to express my appreciation for your support of these travels. This was an unexpected thing that we're just doing impromptu. So thank you so much, Elisabetta, for your time. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you to everybody. She's a magnificent guide. So hopefully we will see you here in Venice uh, sooner rather than later. Thanks for joining us today for this tour of Venice. You can subscribe to this channel and find out about our tours at adventureswithsarah.net.